Jonathan, thanks. Now, the major social media platforms are still allowing hate groups and extremists to use them to get their message across. That's the verdict of U.S. senators who've been quizzing senior figures in Facebook, Twitter and YouTube during a lengthy session on Capitol Hill on Wednesday. Members of the Senate Commerce Committee told them current efforts involving algorithms and artificial intelligence were just not enough to tackle the problem. The committee chairman, Senator John Thune, began the session by setting out the problems. As is so often the case, enemies of our way of life have sought to take advantage of our freedoms to advance hateful causes. Violent Islamic terrorist groups like ISIS have been particularly aggressive in seeking to radicalize and recruit over the Internet and various social media platforms. The companies that our witnesses represent have a very difficult task, preserving the environment of openness upon which their platforms have thrived while seeking to responsibly manage and thwart the actions of those who would use their services for evil. We are here today to explore how they are doing that, what works, and what could be improved. Senator John Thune. Well, Tara Mahler is spokesperson and senior policy advisor at the Counter Extremism Project. She's also formerly a CIA analyst. CEP is a pressure group looking at ways to tackle this particular problem. So does she think the big companies have made any progress? I think we've seen progress from the technology companies over the course of the last year. I think we've seen some gains made in response to pressure from organizations like my own, from Capitol Hill and from the EU. But I think there remains a lot to be done still. And I think that was clear from listening to all the companies in today's Senate Commerce hearing. Because what they're doing, they're using a lot of automated systems, a lot of computer systems to analyze and take down stuff. Uh, Is the problem really that you need humans doing it to make it effective? They seem to be using a mix of both mechanisms, but one of the problems has been is that in many of the cases, the same content keeps resurfacing over and over again because they're not necessarily preventing the upload of problematic content They're trying to keep it down after it goes up, and this becomes a sort of cat and mouse game or whack-a-mole where the same videos keep coming up. We saw actually just recently um, a a particular bomb-making video, which has continued to resurface, um, inspiring an individual in the U.K. who is, you know, being arrested uh, recently for plotting a terrorist attack. This same video is believed to be influential in terms of the Manchester bombing, and our organization has found this video to repeatedly be resurfacing um, across Google platforms. So there's a lot more that can be done with technology. These companies use technology on child pornography to prevent the upload of problematic content. We'd recommend a similar approach on counterterrorism. Doesn't, is, doesn't that actually run the risk of uh, being too wide, that in the end you will end up blocking people you shouldn't block just because of the nature of these, the way these things work? Not necessarily, because the way that the technology has worked for child pornography, and this is sort of the approach we're advocating, is once you've deemed a particular video terrorist in nature, and once you have said that that is prohibited and violates the terms, if you flag that into a database that particular video can be prevented from ever resurfacing. When you put these points to them, which I'm sure your network does, what do they say? Do they have a reason for why they haven't taken the same line as they have with child pornography? That's a really good question. It seems their approach has evolved slightly. At first, you know, they were relying mostly on manual reporting. Now they are using a blend of technology and increasing the monitors they have on staff. So I think, on the one hand, It's been a slow and steady story of movement in the right direction. Um, So we applaud them for that movement. On the other hand, we're not quite there yet, and I think it's going to take continual pressure, like the hearing we saw today, like the pressure that we've been putting on them from the counter-extremism project, like advertisers pulling money, which we also saw happen on YouTube because their ads were running in front of extremist content, and the public getting outraged by not just terrorist content on these platforms, but it's all sorts of bad actors ranging from the, you know, Russian actors that we saw abusing these platforms uh, to child sex trafficking occurring on these platforms where there's regulation now coming out of Capitol Hill. So I think you're seeing a perfect storm of pressure, which will hopefully continue to move them in the right direction and to do more. But I, I think they're resistant. Tara Mahler there of the Counter-Extremism Project. So it's, 